This conference will now be recorded. Fine. So for once again, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Adam. And uh, what we are trying to do, so we are trying to learn DevOps. And in that, the first best practice of DevOps, which is what we call it as continuous development. And as part of continuous development, in the previous session, we understood how an organization should be adapting to agile process. And in an agile, how you're going to do a release planning. And following the release planning, we also saw that what is that we have to do in a day to day activity, whether if we follow an agile scrum or a Kanban. So that is what I was trying to talk. So now, with this details, when you have to actually get your work done, because now we have a requirement and we have decided what is our release plan and we have broken down our release plan into epics and stories and tasks so that now you actually have a task in hand to do so what is the next thing that you're going to do so we are going to start writing code so when i say start writing code let me again repeat what i said yesterday a code is not just about program because for a product to release the program that you write is one kind of code but other than that there will be a lot of supporting work that you have to do for which again we generally call it as coding so that is where writing a shell script or a python script or a powershell script is also called as coding or you might have to write some kind of configuration file or technically we call it as developing a configuration file okay so that's where most of the time people will be calling even if you are writing a hundred lines shell script or a python script you are developing so that is where there will be a lot of things that we have to develop for our release to happen in that if you are a programmer or an actual developer you will be writing some kind of a java program or a dotnet or a node.js whatever it is but if not there will be a lot of other people wherein for doing automation, you also have to develop some script or some tools or some configuration files or even a document. So this is where what we need to understand now is for any given project, how is that all of us are going to do the development together? Where are we going to store all these files? How are you going to maintain? So that is where in the continuous development, now all the guys have to work together. So that is where. There is another best practice which the industry follows is what we call it as version controlling system okay so that's when what exactly is a version controlling system so now let's forget about the release for a minute please go on mute okay so now what i'm trying to talk about is so you have decided a release and for that some changes has to be done for your software which could be a program or it could be a script or it could be some configuration file okay now regardless of who is doing we will still look at from a bigger picture for a product now there are many files that have to write and store so that way in a day in and a day out the actual programmers or the developers or the people who will be writing many files because what is a program if you just understand in a layman term program is nothing but a file inside which you are going to write some syntax so that when you execute it you will be getting some output so that way the question now comes is for developing a software there are many files that you have to write so for a product it is not just that you will be having one file now take your whatsapp as an example you are installing whatsapp so for installing there might be some one executable or a binary file which you download and you install it's not just whatsapp any kind of application so there is one file that you install but internally have you noted when it gets installed to your c drive on windows or in linux to some folder or on your mobile it's basically collection of many files so that way that many files has to be actually written by some people and that is what will be converted later into a actual executable or what we call it as object files now i'm not going into build the detail but just give an idea 
so this way for us to develop a software there might be many files in which we have to write the code okay now again i'm not worrying about whether it's a java code or a c code or a dot net code or a ruby whatever it is now can i achieve everything in one file no so this is where many developers will be working many people will be using the same file so what will happen now let's correlate this to one simple example for understanding better because if there are people who are not from the background of development or from it now take this example all of us are going to work together and create one storybook let's assume that this is the plan so what is the product we are going to sell one storybook now when you storybook what will it contain many pages but a book can be divided into chapters so that way when you sell you are going to put all the chapters together so let's now say i am the manager for that okay and i am dealing with the customer so now i am giving the responsibility to all of us so in my book let's now say that i have four chapters okay now for that chapter i am finding out group of people and i am telling okay hey first group you work on the first chapter second group second chapter so that way i am dividing it and giving the work so what is that each group is going to do they are going to take some pages and start writing some story now if you understand to achieve a story how many pages each group will be taking it's up to them because there might be one chapter which is a small chapter like uh, introduction to something however the middle chapters might be very long because you have to explain something so this is where the same number of pages cannot happen so depending on what context they are writing or what subject they are writing the chapters might be differing and because of that the number of pages that goes inside will also differ okay so now if i have a plan to release my book in a matter of 30 days then how should i work so every day i should go to everyone and ask hey how many of you have completed give me that so that i can do a review and tell you whether it is good or is there a spelling mistake right now that is not going to happen because if i have 300 people working i cannot sit with everyone and find out and the second problem is if one group has completed how will i know whether this is the first chapter that i should start reading or should i wait until the first chapter people or the group completes so this is how for me to create a group i need to have some order then let's assume i am telling okay hey today i am going to review give me all your changes now let's assume all the four group are coming together and each one of them is handling some 100 100 pages now out of this 100 pages how will i know first uh, you know which page i should keep it first which page i should keep it last right so if i mix it then it is going to be a problem so i don't know which page is related to which chapter so this is how even for a simple story that you want to create there is going to be lot of problem because in this if i now find out one page has a problem then i have to go and ask him that hey can you please modify it is not good and what if that guy says hey i wrote this because it is depending on my first chapter in the first chapter something he has written that is why i have mentioned it so what you have to do now you have to modify the first chapter and come back now to coordinate all these things it's going to take lot of time this is what exactly happens in a software development so now replace your story book with a product and replace the pages with files in which you are going to write program and replace the people who are working with developers or qa engineers so what will happen now the same problem like i was explaining yesterday so if i can divide my product okay into let's assume major four functionalities and i'm assuming let's say that a group of people are working i will not know how many files that each developer will be creating or i cannot tell whether the same file has been modified by multiple people or multiple developers and if i want to take a file which file should i take should i take the file from the first developer or second developer and in that also if there is a dependency how will one developer will know that the other developer has completed his work so that is where 
when we actually start writing code and storing all the code as a file then you need to have a proper way of organizing it so that is where in an organization even not now from a long time we used to follow this concept called version controlling system so what does it tell it tells that okay now if you are a developer or a person who are writing some text file don't store it wherever you want store it in a common location so this way what will happen we will request everyone to refer to a common location and store and maintain there so that if you want to do work take a copy from the central location or the common location modify in your place and then share it back to the central place so this way what will happen now if i want to refer to some latest code i don't have to go to each and every one i can just go to the common location or the central location and take whatever is available same way if one developer depends on another developer without going to him if he can just go to the common location whatever is available he can refer so this is one way we can have a better communication okay and the next problem that it will be solving is when you actually take a code as a file it might be containing multiple lines now in that what happens sometime one developer will modify the file and put it back into the central location another developer will take it and on top of it he will write something else so this is when whoever is trying to use the product or test the product as a qa engineer if they take that file which is the latest file it might not work so now how do i know why it is not working and which code is causing the problem so that is where if i take the file it will always show me the latest content but how do i know who put it how did it come so that is where when we are trying to put the content into a common location or a centralized location we follow a process wherein we will follow a process in which we will say whatever changes you are doing we are going to track so tracking means i will make entry like if someone stores a file or even multiple files back into the common location we will make a note okay this person at this time modified all these things and in these files these are the lines which got modified so this way every change that you are going to do to a file or a group of files and you are storing back into a common location we will be able to track so this is how the process called version controlling system will help us to have a track on who and all are modifying the files what got modified when it was modified why it was modified and if i want to take the latest change i can take the latest change or the file from my central or the common location okay so such a kind of process is what we want everyone to follow which is what simply we call it as version controlling system once again what is it if you are developing something and you want to store a file all you have to make sure is go to a common location take the files from there modify on your local machine and put it back and every time you are putting it back the system whatever that you are trying to put it there will start tracking which will clearly tell who modified when was it modified and why was it modified so this is how if there is a problem i can clearly tell okay the problem is because of line 10 so who introduced the line 10 in it so if i go back and take a history of who and all has modified to get it okay so this, we are going to follow a system which will help us to track what and all changes are going in okay plus is that the only thing what you are going to do no now this is a common location or a central location so at any point of time if anyone wants to refer to a product or refer to the latest files of a product officially then they should be referring to the common location okay and as well as it will also give us a control so what do you mean by control now i told you that okay there are like 100 developers working now everyone will try to write code and they will be storing the code back into the common location but for certain reasons i don't want everyone to do that so that is where if you have such a requirement where you want to have a control on who should modify who should not modify 
then you can do that also in the common location so all these things is doable so that process wherein if you are going to have a common location in which you can have a control on who should modify and who should not modify and for every change that you are trying to store it back you can have a control and keep tracking of what and all changes happen so such a kind of process is what we call it as version controlling system okay so by implementing it whether you are a developer or you are a qa engineer or any kind of automation engineer or support engineer any time going forward if you have to think about storing some text related file again make a note of this point i'm talking about text related file i'm not talking about binary files because there is a separate concept and there are separate tools for that so we are focusing on for a software release what and all files that will get changed which is a text related file if you want to store it and maintain it then you're going to follow this process called version controlling system so developers are the people who would be using it heavily however all of us will be using it at some point of time because we might also write some kind of code which is related to a script or some automation or a configuration or a document so no matter what kind of text file you are trying to write all of us have to use it so this is what i will again tell a little later okay so this is why in devops we understood what is continuous development for that exactly if we are trying to modify a file what we have to do is we have to follow this process okay so this is where how are you going to follow this so for this there is a tool available so like this for every best practice there is a tool available so this is where for implementing the version controlling system earlier in the market there were different tools available so right from the beginning if you see there were tools like cvs or rcs and then things like clear case came into the picture and then perforce tfs subversion so there are plenty of tools that started coming into the market now out of that git is one of the popular tool which was used in devops because now if you understand all the earlier tools that i was telling that is subversion clear case tfs or you know uh, perforce all of them were mainly used by developers but now as we are moving towards the devops culture we are focusing on more and more automation so any one of us can write some kind of code or develop a script or a document so that is where all of us have to store some files somewhere so that is when what we need is a system which is very simple or a process which is very simple i don't want something huge because see for a developer storing thousands of files in your repository if you have a big tool it is okay but let's assume i am not a developer i am part of a qa guy who is writing some test suite or test automation script or i am a support person or a admin who is writing some small script so for me to write and store if i use a huge tool then it will be too much of overhead or maintenance so that is where in devops we are not going to just think of doing automation but we are also going to think on how effectively can you do the maintenance of the work okay so it's not about using it it's also about maintaining it effectively so that it should be easy and simple for using and maintenance so that's where git as a tool became popular so that is where knowingly or unknowingly wherever you go outside everyone will say oh if it is devops you should know git that is reason because for doing the actual parallel development working with different people and different products it will be quite easy so that's where now we need to know how git will be helpful for us to do all this activity okay now before i get into git let me first explain you what are the terminologies that we will be using in the version controlling system okay now before i move further is there any question for those who don't understood what is version controlling system is it clear or any questions on what is version controlling system and why is that now it is important for everyone in the culture of devops uh adam can you hear me yeah, go adam, ahead can you hear me 
yeah adam uh, i would like to uh, this is not about version control but uh, this is about git um, probably it might be a, a, a hasty doubt but i have been having this doubt for a quite long time in git if you take uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, terminologies are being used well a few people are saying git few people are saying github a uh, few people are saying gitlab and uh, okay. uh, i'm not sure like ganesh, what is it ganesh i got your question um, yeah again i'll repeat this whatever that you're going to ask we'll be covering because i haven't even gone into what is git and different okay. terminology okay so said, yeah. if you understand i'm going it from a proper level where i made you understand what is agile what is continuous development and in that what is version controlling so first i want you to clear and now as we go into git that's my first thing today we are going to learn but anyway for others what is that we are going to learn today we will understand what is version controlling system and in that we will understand what is git what is the architecture of git what are the different terminologies of git how it is used how is it set up what is that central repository gitlab github all those things and then we will start getting into the actual commands okay so that way my question was if everyone understands what is version controlling system then i'll move ahead but anyway i'll explain what you are asking ganesh it's part of the subject adam one quick question adam yeah so um, irrespective of uh, what uh, technologies we are coming from maybe storage maybe networking maybe or uh, servers maybe or just the monitoring teams maybe so the significance of version controlling remains the same across fields i just want to know how significant could it be for me personally coming from networks background yeah it's going to be the same like i said if in your day to day activity you have to store some file which can be reused or we have to share it with someone again and again whether it could be a script or it could be a configuration file or even a document i am sure pretty sure everyone will be doing all these things so where are you going to store okay. don't store in any of the common location in your machine but store it into a common location which is called as vcs and the advantage of here is it is going to be one place of proof and you are going to have a complete record of what is going in who is modifying when was it modified and there are pretty much you can also give a control on who should see who should not see so pretty much across various uh, different technologies uh, technology practices it is going to be an important task yeah yes so anything you are going to develop think of using it to store those files what you are developing again i am repeating it's fine if it takes little minute but understand development doesn't mean you are developing a program it could be a configuration file it could be a script or it could be even a document you are developing something for a release and if it's a text related file start using this concept and store the file okay yeah i remembered uh, yesterday is your line it's almost always there will be some file either a configuration file or some file we have to deal with so if i remember that yesterday's line of yours then it all makes sense here there will always be yeah. some configuration file it doesn't mean development only some scripts will be there some files will be there yes uh, adam sure. adam premier adam premier uh, just i uh, have two questions quick question yeah uh, see uh, will there be any internal database uh, reside in the vcs or any system i mean any yes, control I'll version of the system architecture uh, i'll talk about that okay so as we move on like i said the architecture i'll explain what is that you want thank you thank you adam adam yeah. i have a question Yeah. yeah, I have one question. Uh, in version control, uh, if we submit multiple users at a time in uh, version control, so how can you identify first user submitted this document and second user that uh, submitted configuration file? So, is there any uh, clue? How can we identify that? That is my question. Yes, yes I'll be answering that also. Okay. Yeah. yeah. thank you uh, adam that. one quick one quick question uh, why we are calling this a distributed version control system why can't we call this a version control system since uh, we are just taking the code making our changes promoting it so why we are calling a distributed version control system okay you will also get the answer for that as we move on to the slides okay, okay fine. So that's thank what you. i said um, old back. adam i had the one uh, suggestion can you give me the one minute 
please finish in this VCS term uh, section few uh, steps, then give the people to be asked the question. Because uh, as you're telling, that everything is coming in a coming slides. So I think we have to wait for some time. Let slide will finish, then we can ask the question. So we can save the time and also we can understand other things. If hope everybody will be uh, agree with me. Yes, I agree, agree. Yes, correct. Yeah. So my point again for that is, if I mentioned clearly, I said, don't jump into anything else because all those things what you're asking is there. How to take it, that's what I'm trying to do it in a taken a proper way. But just my question was to make sure, first, do you understand what is VCS? So with that understanding, so now you take any tool. Again, I'm not talking about Git or any other tool. So most of the tools that you are already using, it works in a concept called server and a client architecture. So what do you mean by a server? So server is nothing but a place where you are going to store everything. So now what happens is when you go to an organization, you will be having a server in which you are going to store the file. Okay. Now to compare it better, think as a bank. So in a bank, there is some common location and all our savings are going into it. Correct. Now in that, if you understand each of us, let's say that all of us have a bank account like HDFC. Okay, I don't have any preference, just an example. But let's assume there are 100 people with having 100 accounts. All the money is getting stored in the bank. But is it that all of us are storing together? No. So that is where there is some kind of boundary which is defined and whatever that we store will be within it. That is what we call it as an account, right? Because using the account, we will be able to track, okay, this is what you have stored. The same way in VCS, what are you going to store? All the files related to your product. Now, there might be multiple products that you're going to store in the server, which is nothing but like a folder. Now, how are you going to store? So rather than storing into together, we will be dividing it into layer or consider it like a folder. So server is a machine in which I will create separate folders just for assumption and I'm going to store everything separately. So in this example, I might have three products and I'm going to store all the files related to my product A into this and product B into this and product C into this. So it doesn't matter how many developers are working, all of them are going to store the files in the respective folders. And that way, in a bank, you call it as an account, but in VCS, this folder is what we call it as a repository. Okay. So now if you understand repository is nothing but a location in which all the files are going to actually get stored. Okay, so this way in VCS or in a server of a VCS, you can have many repositories. So it all depends on your company's need and how big is the server you can store. But remember, if I say a repository, all the files related to a product is what you're going to store here. Okay. Now. So when you are going to start your work, your interest, let's assume, is only to start modifying an existing file or you are going to create a new file for a product. So that is where you will be working on a different machine. Okay. So now you can use your laptop or you can have a separate machine given to you in which you are going to do your development work. So again, when I say development work, you are trying to modify the file and try to change it. So that way, that machine in which you are going to work also needs a software which is called as the client side. Okay, so what is the responsibility? Is going to communicate to the server and help you to see the content of a particular repository. See, it's like an ATM. Now, bank will be having all the accounts, but depending on your need, you will go to an ATM nearby and use that to connect to the server and see your account. Right? The same way when you are working in VCS, you will be having a client. But inside the client, which is nothing but your machine, what you are going to do is you are going to create a folder. Now, why do you need this folder? This is the folder inside which you are going to see the content of a particular repository. Okay? Again, remember, it's just like an ATM. So, in an ATM screen, if I want to see the account details at a time, I will be able to see one account details, right? Even though I can have multiple account at a time, I can see only one. The same way 
when you have files in all this repository if i want to work from my machine i will install client now i cannot take a copy of all of them because this might have 100 files this might have 1000 files and this might have even 10000 files where will i put it how will i segregate correct so that is where we are going to create a separate folder wherein this folder will try to show you only the content of a particular repository that you choose like how in my atm i say hey connect to my particular account all right using your account number the same way what you are going to do now is you are going to communicate to the server and tell you are interested to work on one repository and you want to see the files of that so that way when you request the server the client will connect to the server and in the server a specific repository it will copy the content and it will put into this folder so that process of getting the files from the server from a particular repository into a folder in your machine through client is what we call it as checkout so now if i want to first see my files then i have to do this concept called checkout now how to do what command that is what is going to change from two to two but it's just more of a generic concept i'm telling uh, so adam it should be check in right no please wait i'll explain what is it okay so first what we are trying to do is we are trying to see the file because if you have to start developing first you want to see the file if there is a file already available you need to first see the file right so that is where is the file going to be available because let's assume you are joining a company and they have given you a laptop now in that laptop if you have to start first you should take the copy of that from the repository so that is where checkout means you are going to take a copy of the file from the server wherein whatever is available you will get a copy now that is called as checkout so when you say checkout it is giving you a copy of the file and then after you get the file you will start modifying whatever file you that you want and once you have modified all the files you have to store it back into the common location so that way after you have modified if you want to store it back into the common location then that is what we call it as check in okay so the simple difference check out means you are taking a copy of the files from a repository to your machine into a folder and once you modify you are going to put it back into the repository so that is what is called as check in so this way for every user you will be having a separate folder in which you are modifying and seeing that folder is called as workspace as the name says this is what you are using it to do the work so it is nothing but a folder in your machine or in your laptop like this every user will have their own workspace in their machine or the same user can have multiple workspaces depending on different repositories so you are going to modify and when you are going to check in it will go back to the same repository so let's assume you checked out from repository a you modified and when you are storing it back the check in will not put it in b it is going to go back into the a just like your atm you go to an atm and you connect to account and you do some transaction it is going to store back into the same account okay now what happens is like when i said a bank if you try to do some transaction it will go to your specific account and every transaction that you do whether you are removing money or adding money it will be tracked as a transaction id and that will be unique so that is how if tomorrow you are trying to get the details of your account all you will say is take a statement and that statement will show you what and all has been transferred how much has been put in and how much has been removed okay so that is what we call it as a transaction in the same way in version controlling system every check in that a person does has typically few information so what are the information the check in carries is first which repository you are modifying and in that what are the files which is getting modified and in that file what exactly or what line have you modified that information will also be there plus 
who is the user who is modifying that information will also be available including the timestamp so that way just like your bank transaction id remember this is an example which will be very easy to correlate in version controlling system every time a user checks in it will take the details on who is modifying what are the files being modified and what is the content which has been modified and when it was modified so just like a bank transaction id for an account for every check in a person does it will be having the details so like this if you understand for every check in what you are creating a transaction right that transaction is what we call it as version okay and that is why the name of the tool is given as version controlling system earlier these were called as source code management tools but now to make it simplified because it is not only the source code almost all the text files can be stored they changed it into vcs so the name came from this itself so like how you call transaction ids in a bank for every check in whatever the transaction you are doing that has been tracked as a version and what is this it's actually a metadata okay wherein it's going to store who modified what modified and when was it modified so this way in every repository for every check in that a person does it is going to keep a track of what has been modified same way now if you want to work you will have to create a workspace based on each repository so this is where now let's assume i completed my work in project a now i have been assigned to work on another project then if i have to work on project b that's an assume then again i have to do a checkout take the copy of the files from repository b into my new folder which is workspace at the second which is a different workspace and i will modify and i will do a check in so this way each of us will be having a client and we are going to modify and do a check in so this is what is your regular process that you are going to do okay so by this it should be clear for you now what is server what is repository what is a workspace and what do you mean by checkout and check in okay hi dav this is suresh here yes uh, this is we are discussing the subversion right the topic okay i am not talking about subversion this is generic whether you take oh. subversion whether you take clear case perforce tfs any tool that you have worked this is the normal process which is called as vcs okay, okay. every tool the naming will be little different but this is the process adam you mentioned okay. that the, uh, you mentioned that there is a metadata right is that metadata is applicable for the particular user or applicable for entire repository it's for entire repository whatever that so you are going to contain, store will be stored okay. in the repository it will, it will contain multiple user information right say adam prem mm -hmm. or whatever people all those information will contain in the metadata right oh. for every user uh, check in happens there will be a separate version that is going to get created so that way metadata is specific to a repository but inside the repository each version is specific to a user same user can do multiple check ins but if different users are doing different check in so each check in will be referred to a version which will be a metadata of what user what modified and when what was modified Okay, and the, one more one more question. Can we do multiple checkout in a, in a, in at a time? Okay, the concept of checkout is seeing the file. Now, if you have already checked out, you already have the files inside the folder, so you don't have to do a checkout again. But if you want to create another workspace or folder, then you need to create another folder, and then you are going to do a checkout. So if you compare it with what the question you are asking, I have go to a ATM. i have already connected by giving my password to one account should i again log in no until the end of the transaction you are going to use but for various reason if i have to connect then i have to use a different atm and then try to use the same way for one workspace you are going to do one checkout and you can do as many check ins as you want okay perfect so adam does checkout also whenever you make any checkout so whether the information is stored in the repository or it is just a checkout only at the time of check in the repository uh, that uh, metadata is maintained in the repository yeah i'll i'll talk about it there's a little change in what you are asking because from two till two little vary i'll talk about okay. the problems of that okay fine thank you 
so now with this understanding now if you understand yeah there are many tools available but why is that industry started using git and especially when we say devops now what the hell is devops if you literally understand it's all about automating and making sure that you can deliver faster and make sure that the maintenance work is also good so that is where when compared to all the other tools for every one of us to use git was used mainly for a couple of reasons the first reason is it is speed which means if you have already worked on many tools and if you are going to work on git it will be quite faster how it will be faster we will see that and second there is something called as non linear development wherein if you are working on other tool there will be certain limitations whereas in git not have that limitation now what is that again we are going to see that and again when you take other tools other tools are not fully distributed but git is distributed so that is where again what is this distributed we are going to know but other than that from a simple user level git is lightweight and process is going to be very easy so that we can easily install and maintain so that is where it's going to be quite popular whether your repository is going to have 10000 files or you are just modifying with two files the process is going to be the same and it's not going to take much of the time so that is where people started using git and in devops we prefer because it is going to help us to do our work faster and it is simple and maintenance is also less so with that now let us understand the problems so if you look at this diagram i have mentioned two diagrams now first what i want you to look at is my diagram which is on the left side okay so the model that i was trying to explain you so far right the vcs terminologies that is called a Okay. To be only audio. Yeah, there was a disturbance. Uh, breaking network. in between. Yeah, yeah. Was just breaking. Uh, yeah, there was a, a breakup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll repeat it anyway. So yes, in the product, there is going to be one repository. Okay. So where are you going to store? so you are going to store it in a server so that way if you are following a old tool there will be one server okay and in that server for every product you are going to have okay so that way remember one product or for every product there is going to be one repository in common now all the tools that you guys were talking about subversion clear case tfs right they work in this model so this is where for your company you will set up one server and for every product you are going to have your repository stored and then as a user if you are going to work in each of your machine you will install the client and in the client you will do checkout modify and check in so that is what the process you will be doing now what are the problems that you are going to face in this so let's assume that your organization is you know kind of geographically distributed and because of that the repository that we are going to maintain is on a different location so now if you are going to work in a different location when you say checkout what do you mean by checkout it is like typically copying the files from one machine to another machine okay now think of it like this what if i tell you are working on a project which has like 10000 files and each file will contain more than 100 lines now typically it is like downloading a movie okay so now depending on the region if you are trying to do a checkout and you are trying to copy the files yeah. from your repository to your machine that itself is going to take minimum of 15 minutes or 20 minutes then assume in a company i have 100 developers working and each developer spending 15 minutes just to do a checkout is a huge amount of time that we are wasting okay 
that is one problem and second problem is the same when you modify once again when you do a checkout it is going through the network now this is where what if there is a network issue or a network latency then what will happen if you are a user and you want to store it back into the central repository then you have to wait until the network is fine and then it will go so that is where the concept of checkout and check in is going to be delayed now how much it's just a exaggeration i'm just trying to tell you but even if one minute has been wasted assume how much of time that all together i am going to spend so that is where there will be little slowness then what are the other problems you are going to have now if there is a network issue and there is no communication between my machine or the client and my master i will not be able to do a check in because let's assume that i am a fast developer i keep doing changes like this then if i want to store then i need to store it into the central repository if it doesn't happen then there's a slowness and not just that so let's say i am trying to do some poc what is poc proof of concept now i don't want this to be available on the central repository then how can i store only in my machine because there is no backup but if i try to store anything into the central repository now it is common to everyone which means anyone can take the code which could be wrong so that is where as a user or a developer you are supposed to store everything into the common location which is not at all good for a developer because i want to test and only the code which is fine i want to store but if i have to do all those things in the common location then every code that i am modifying is also getting stored so that is where for a developer he cannot do any trial runs or he cannot do just some random coding unnecessarily now that is when we have another problem then what happens if assume i am working with another developer and both of us are together working to achieve a solution to a problem for that we have to modify some files now i have modified a file which is available in my machine in my workspace how will i share it to other person so this is where in the regular way either i have to do scp but it is not just like one file right i have to give my entire workspace because there will be lot of dependencies internally so again if i have to share to this person i cannot share directly then the only process is i have to put it back into central repository for which i have to do check in and this guy has to do a check out from there so the process is getting delayed but once again what if i am not interested to share it with everyone then once again everything has to go through central repository so this is the problem that we have which is going to actually slow down the development process okay because now we are focusing on continuous development now many changes has to be done so how is that you are going to make the users life easy so that's where git comes in so now what i want to think is go back to the previous diagram okay so that is my centralized tool now in this diagram what if i say you do not have a server at all okay so remember if i am saying that there is no server then what is left out in this picture only client and workspace so this way now in git there is no concept of server okay so in git everything is a workspace which is nothing but a folder that is the first thing you need to know okay why should i have only folders then the next question is okay now if i have to work what is that i have to do first i have to check out the code from the repository so that it will come inside my workspace that is why we need something called as workspace but now if i say there is no server then where is the repository will be so that is where in git everything is a workspace and in every workspace you are going to have a copy of the repository okay i'll repeat it in git everything is a workspace and every workspace will have a repository copy okay now how is it going to solve the problem okay uh 
guys if you have an audio problem i would request you to disconnect and connect again because it depends on your network okay now what i'm trying to tell is in git everything is a workspace and every workspace will internally have a repository so how is it going to solve my problem so now go back to the actual problem that i said if you are a user you are working in git you will get a workspace how do you get we will talk about it but let's assume now i have given you a workspace now in that workspace you will also have a repository inside it okay so if you have to now start writing your code or modifying the code the first thing you are going to do is check out right so this way if i give you a workspace which will also have a repository and if you want to do a checkout you will do the checkout from your repository so that way the file will get checked out from this repository in your workspace and it will be visible within the same workspace and how much of time do you think for that it will not be taking much time because it is available in your soem folder so checkout will be instant okay then you modify the code and next what you are going to do you are going to do check in now when you are going to do check in where are you going to store the check in so this is where once again when you say check in it will go to the repository so for you which is the repository available on the same workspace there is one repository available so when you do a check in it will immediately go to the same folder so that way how much of time it will take it's very fast so that is when check out and check in will be faster for you okay so it solves one of the problem next okay. adam what adam can you please repeat again in git everything is a workspace and in every workspace you will be getting a copy of the repository so this is where if you are going to work the check out and check in will be done in that workspace and within that whatever repository you have so that way whatever you are modifying and checking in will be stored inside that repository so this way you don't have to worry about the time because it's going to be super fast which is first problem solving okay then if you understand for every user if you create a workspace every one of them will have a copy of the repository which is owned by them so that way now unlike earlier if i want to do some changes i will do the check in and where will it be available it will be available in my repository the same way if any other user modifies the change it will also be available in his repository it is like carrying our own atms with us okay so this way the benefit now again is adam i have one question here actually uh, uh, it's like uh, um, uh, if uh, we have one larger pro uh, project and 100 of developers are working there so do every developer has a whole code uh, in his repository yeah i'm coming to that okay so we'll talk about yeah. that with this question so now yeah from where you are going to get we didn't go into that first we are still understanding the repository by that way yes sure. you are going to get the complete repository available in your workspace so that way now when you do a checkout and check in all the changes is available only inside your workspace so this way if there is another person and he be modifies it is available only in his repository now what is the problem that or the advantage you are getting now anything i modify i am not sharing with anyone else i'm still keeping it in my repository whereas what happens here if you try to store it to keep a backup then it is going back to the central repository where everyone is seeing but now if you are trying to do check in where it is storing it is available in your machine so that is where it doesn't matter with network so every user will have a workspace and every workspace will have a copy of a repository and whatever changes that you are doing will be stored inside it so this is how it will be quite easy for a developer to just start doing his work so i don't have to worry about others i can start doing my changes and i can store the changes as long as i want into my repository which is actually getting tracked 
because suddenly i want to know hey two days back i did some change i want to know what exactly did i do so that is where i can go back to my repository and ask for a statement which is nothing but list of versions and i can find out oh this is what i did so it looks like this is the modification i wanted to know okay fine so this way it will be very useful for the developer to find out this okay now this way it solves another problem but going back to the actual workflow as a developer or as a user you are free to modify anything that you want inside your repository but what is the point of modifying at some point you have to share it to a common location like a book that i was telling right you can start writing pages together but when i want to create a book i have to combine that way one time where if i want to share my changes to everyone then where are you going to put so that is where whether i want to share the changes or i want to refer to what others have done we should have one more common location so that is where in git what we will do like how you had a copy of a workspace because everything is a workspace i told right you will take another copy and make that copy as a centralized repository or a centralized workspace so what is the difference now as a user you will be having a copy of the workspace and that will be available in your machine and that will have a repository and you own that workspace you own that repository however we will have one more common copy of the workspace which will also have a repository and this is for common to everyone and that way whatever as an organization we are going to refer we are going to refer to this common repository okay which is generally call it as central repository or remote repository so in fact now if you understand when we have to create the first process or the first workspace that we should create is the central workspace or the remote repository because as a user if you want to start working how are you going to get the workspace so that is where you are going to make a copy of the central repository for the first time then whatever is available in the central workspace you will also get it as a copy and you will also get a repository and you modify all the changes that you want and finally when you decide that your changes are ready to be submitted back to the common location or it is going to be into you know the actual product then you are going to share it back to the central repository so that is how every user will have the freedom of modifying the changes in their local workspace then they are going to store it back into the common location okay that is the whole process okay so this is where what is the flexibility now it is giving so as a user you can find out that i will get my own copy of the repository i can modify as long as i want and then when i am going to share it with others all i am going to do is share it with the central workspace or repository and not just this this is where if you understand everything is nothing but a workspace the central workspace has one repository which is common to everyone whereas these are individual workspaces which is owned by a specific user so now i can choose to whom i have to share the change because if i decide that my change is very good change and i am going to put it into the centralized location then i am going to share it to the central repository or remote repository the same thing now if i want to share it to the developer which is another problem i told you right like if i am working on a poc i don't want to share it here if i want to share it to a person i can choose my repository and i can share it so this is why it is called as distributed so you can share changes what you have done between two repositories it could be between two local repositories of a user or it could be between your local repository and a central repository or a remote repository so that is why git is called as distributed whereas in other tool there is only one repository so anything you do will always go here so by working in this way 
git has lot of benefit to the user because first every workspace has its own repository so you have the complete freedom of what you are modifying and at any point of time you can decide to store it and you want to share it you can share it with an individual or you can share it to everyone by putting into the common location okay so this is what git is going to work and this is what is going to help us to do the continuous development or parallel development in a better way okay so that's why git solves all the problem that i was talking about earlier so remember in git everything is a workspace and every workspace has a repository but as a process what we will do first we will create the central repository and from there as a user you want to work you are going to create a copy of the workspace and then you are going to start doing your work okay so this is the whole concept Sorry, adam here the yes okay, adam one question yeah one question see if you in 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 a, in a centralized model if you lose uh, computer a if you that's i consider the computer a and b is crashed can we restore the, uh, the code whatever we are doing in the client side can we restore it in the centralized model as well as distribution model also can that be possible if a, if i lose server computer can we use the data which is in the server computer one a computer a and b can we restore it to the server computer a? can we uh, uh, make it done again the whole concept of having a common repository is not just for sharing but it's also for storing so that is where the best practice what we follow is whether you are using centralized model or distributed model every time or very frequently once you modify don't just keep only the changes in your repository keep sharing it to the central repository so that way if your machine crashes you are not able to get back i can go to another machine in that machine if i try to make a copy of this workspace i'm going to get everything again so that i can start doing my work so the best practice is so, start taking workspace no, question, modify the changes no, and is, keep changes no, my question is if i lose a uh, server computer i mean the uh, primary server can we restore the data using the computer a and b yes that is where you need to know that oh, how are you going to take a backup because now i still didn't go into the part how you are going to set it up what tool you are going to use i told git but in git also there are different parts okay so that is more about the maintenance and exactly what you said as a user now there are two things that you need to know in git okay so one is working on the local repository and the second part is managing your central repository so that is where you are going to have two roles okay i'll talk about that also as we move forward but again like i said there are a lot of things it's not just git in the sense four commands you need to know what is going to do how you are going to do the work okay now if you have understood the difference between centralized model and distributed model now let me just walk you through the architecture so that before you run or you know maintain the commands it's quite necessary for you so now if you understand it's the same question someone was trying to ask okay so if you say that my local workspace is nothing but a copy of my central repository will i have everything in my local repository yes but the difference is let's go back to your bank when you say that you have an account regardless of how rich you are does it mean that your bank account has all of the physical money no it's more of the numbers right the same way if you say repository the reason why i earlier told the word called metadata because it is not storing your files it is basically going to store some metadata on what exactly you have modified so that way if i have a file just for one example i might modify the file 1000 times so git is not going to make 1000 copies of the file and store into repository but instead of that what git does is git uses a concept called snapshot which is nothing but difference between what i had earlier and what i have done now so it is going to just take only that information and like a screenshot of your machine how you capture everything so that way 
it is going to take a difference of that and it is going to store it so like your bank account what you will be having in your account is full of transaction ids right in the same way in git repository what you are going to have is fully information about versions that is where git is quite efficient because now think if your repository has 10000 files and there are 100 developers modifying this file in the past 3 to 4 months how many changes you are going to have so you are not going to keep that many copies of the file so that is where git is going to store only the version information so that is where when you try to create your own workspace it will give you a copy of the repository but from that we can choose what to see and how to work and that is what as we move forward we will be seeing so remember git uses internally something called a snapshot and that is what it is going to store all the metadata okay so there is nothing called as completely a database but yes it uses the concept of snapshot and keeps a version information of what and all has been modified okay so now if you dig in little deeper in the bank but, uh, if you do a transaction uh, every sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt uh, yes. adam uh, in regards to this previous slide i have one small doubt see uh, what you explained in the previous slide is like we'll, uh, git will be saving only the uh, metadata of the particular file so uh, yes the changes will be getting into the file because the reason is um, uh, only if whatever the changes which i have made in, in the particular uh, file it might be a coding or it might be a docker file or it might be in a yaml chart or some yaml file or something but whatever the changes if i have made in my uh, in my workstation if it gets replicated or if it gets uh, a check in in the centralized repository then only uh, we would be able to use it or we would be able to share it with uh, for for deployment or for testing it but whereas if it is getting only uh, if it is saving only the snapshots and the metadata how the uh, changes will be getting into the file okay so that is where the checkout concept actually does okay so if you want to think it's the same concept when you are trying to do a bank transaction you put a money into your account let's say that you go to an atm you put or drop some money how does it get converted into a number so there is some logic which they internally do right in the same way what we call it as objects okay so that is where you need to understand this concept when you are trying to do a check-in what git does is it will take a collection of certain things okay what is that collection of the thing so every time a person does a check-in, it takes a snapshot, okay? So what is a snapshot? Snapshot is like an object which refers to what are the changes that you have done specifically. And along with that, the check-in will also have the details on who modified, when modified. Now, like this, every time you are going to check-in, it is going to store a detail just like your bank transaction i was about to say the same thing now in a bank transaction at any point of time if you go and take a statement have you noted it gives you a transaction id and in the transaction id it is going to tell what was done and on the side it will also tell you at that point of time what was the amount that was there by which you can calculate everything so that way when you say snapshot every check in will refer to one snapshot which will tell you what was modified now and what was there earlier okay now when you do a checkout it will take this reference and convert it into a file but now the question again if you ask little deeper okay this check-in is giving me only the changes what i have done but how will i get all the changes before it so that is where the meaning of snapshot when i said what you have now and what you had before so it knows what it had before so how does it know that is again on top of another check-in or another snapshot so that way the current snapshot will be using a previous snapshot and it will get the details so like this if you go it becomes something like a linked list so if you take one check-in or one commit id it will refer to what was there earlier and what is now and if you want to know what you had earlier you go back so this way 
when you try to do a checkout what exactly git will be doing is with reference to that id and remaining all of them which has been derived from that it will get you the details the same way like in your bank account if you go and see your latest it will be on top of all the previous transactions you did right and that's where internally it will be using it so let's not worry too much into the object but just think in this way it stores the information like a linked list so that when you say that hey git i want to check out and see this file so it will first ask you what is the id in which you want to work so based on that it will go internally to a snapshot and this snapshot will refer to another previous snapshot because it needs to take a difference and that snapshot will be keep going on so that is how you will be able to get your entire content of your file or multiple files in your workspace so that is where every time you do a check in what you are going to get is not a simple id but that id has a object which is called as snapshot and it will also have the details who modified and when was it modified okay and additionally there is one more information that you are going to store which is called as a message again compare it to your bank transaction when you are doing a transaction in a bank have you noted it will be asking something as a remark so what is that remark so remark is like quickly to identify the same way in git also every time when you are going to do a check in it will be asking you for a message and going forward in git we will not be referring as check in the other word used for it is commit so that way every time you do a check in or a commit what you are going to get is a unique 40 characters which is what we call it as commit id and for those who know what is a checksum so when you say a check in what git will be doing is it will collect all this information and it will convert it into a 64 bit value and that 64 bit value is what you are going to get it as 40 characters which is what we call it as checksum okay so that is why it's quite powerful no one can just modify it at any point of time because just like a bank transaction i cannot just go back at some point of time and from the previous transaction if i add some money will i get everything no anything that you do will always be referring to the latest and that will traverse back until the beginning so that way what you are going to have in your repository is full of commit ids which is nothing but version and every commit id will be a collection of data that is what snapshot which refers to what you have modified and who modified when was it modified and what was the purpose you have modified okay so that's how you're going to have a whole lot of details uh, okay sorry adam uh, one more doubt in the previous slide uh, yeah so uh, is it possible uh, can i can i give a, a request to git in such a way that i want to merge or i want a specific uh, commit id like for example uh, uh, in this uh, checksum you have shown that this has a initial commit but uh, uh, after initial commit i have uh, just for an instance i have uh, i have made a couple of changes so almost like initial plus uh, three changes i have made so uh, and then after that i have made another uh, four to five changes and now it's in the uh, seventh change what i am right now so it looks like i have made some mistakes so i just want to compare it and i want only the commit id which is uh, initial plus 3 and then in mid uh, can i can i have such kind of uh, a commit id reference or a snapshot like that is it possible okay. so you are not going to actually see any snapshot because internally okay. when you say check in it is going to create a snapshot and that will be converted into a commit id but yes just like your bank transaction i can have a list of transaction at any point of time i can go back to a particular transaction and it will show me at that time what was the total amount i had the same way every time you modify and check in you are going to have a list of commit ids you can go back to a particular commit so it is not like i can say that hey i will take two three commit ids no at any point of time you are going to refer to one commit id and that will show everything which is there prior to it just like your bank transaction okay because everything is going to be on top of 
one another just like your bank transaction so start correlating this so if you want to go so, back any point of time you can go back to a commit id and it will show at that time what and all changes it had and prior to that based on that you can refer to it so so in that case we would be able to refer only the metadata of that uh, commit id not the exact uh, file or uh, the code we want it will show only the metadata like no see that's what try to understand the concept of check in or commit id is for git to show you the details so you will not be worried about the metadata like how i told you hey i will go to the bank and i will say hey show me exactly what is the detail that i have for this bank transaction how did it get the bank transaction that is up to the bank to take care but at that time what is the total amount it will give you the same way if you tell to git hey i want to work in this commit id so what will git do from the metadata what it knows for that commit id it will fetch you the information so as a user you are not going to worry about the metadata because that's the responsibility of git as a user what we should just know is what is the commit id we are having and from that what is the file that i'm going to see so we will refer everything to files whereas internally it is the responsibility of the git to take care of the metadata on the snapshot but it's quite necessary we understand how it is there so so uh, sorry uh, uh, for this one more uh, uh, clarification madam uh, so whenever uh, if i request for any hello. commit id yeah hey sorry for the interruption so uh, like we are not able to cope up with it if you don't mind why don't you push this question if you want to know like so okay. we are just losing flow actually so if you don't mind okay okay if you please Yeah, Ganesh. Probably just hold on after the finish. I'll clarify your doubts. Okay. 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 Now I've been telling how it is going to store. Now one more thing is again, what is it important? See, you might think why this guy is talking about it because when you really start working in Git, all these things are important. So now if you go back in Git, what did I told you? Everything is a workspace. now workspace is nothing but a folder now inside that you are going to have a repository so that is where now if you actually see inside your workspace you are not going to have one area now typically in git a workspace can be divided into three areas so what do you mean by three areas so there is one location which is called as repository and this is where you are going to store everything that you have modified okay so quickly let me just show you what is that in a diagram so let's assume this is your workspace now in a workspace in git you are going to divide it into three areas okay now the three areas what you are seeing here is one is called as working directory the other one is called as staging area then the third one is called as repo now why do you need three here so this is where first what you need to understand is whatever that we understood here we have a repository and this is where all your versions or commit ids will be stored just an example let's say i'm storing commit ids like this but what happens now is when you are trying to get a commit id first thing what you will do is you need to first modify the file for that you are going to do a checkout right so when you do a checkout from the repository it will put it into a working directory so that is where in the working directory you will be able to see the files or in other way working directory is the location inside your workspace where you will be actually seeing the files and modifying the files okay and then once you have modified you are going to do a check in but before the check in like i said you need to generate a snapshot correct so that's where the process is in git you are not going to directly check in but first check out modify the code in your working directory and then you are going to take that code and put to another area called staging area and this is where git is going to take the snapshot and then from this staging area 
you will be actually doing the check-in so that is how first you modify and you put the content into staging area where it will try to take the snapshot and then from there it will collect all the information and create a id which is called as commit id so that is where in every workspace you are working in git you are going to have three areas which is quite important okay now what you are going to see is only the workspace because the repository will be a hidden folder inside your workspace as well as the staging area whatever i told is actually not a folder but it's just a virtual space that is available logically so that is how internally git will be creating so that now tomorrow when we start working you need to understand that there are three areas and accordingly you are going to work so all the commit gets stored in your repository into a location called as what is it which is the repository and where you are going to modify the file is what we call it as the working directory okay now when you talk about a file now one thing that if you have to note from other tool the difference is git doesn't care about a folder in other tool if you try to put a empty folder it will also try to check in that but in git remember empty folder doesn't have a value because a folder has a value only if you put a file inside it okay now with that when you are actually trying to create a file okay first you will be creating a file in the working directory and only then you will add it to the staging area and you will put it into the repository now when you try to create a new file the file will be called as a untracked file the meaning is there is no information about the file in the repository that is why it is not tracking it is called as untracked but as soon as the file is been put into the repository then the file is called as tracked file tracked means git knows about it but when you say a tracked file see what do you mean by tracked you know the information about it so what is that information that is where it will clearly tell whether the file that you have is it modified or not modified so what do you mean by that so let's assume you just created a copy of your central repository and you will get it and when you do a checkout whatever the commit ids you have corresponding to that you will be seeing some files here so that way you are seeing the file with what is available in the repo so there is no difference between what is there in the repo and what you have modified then the file is what we call it as unmodified file then once you modify the file there is a difference between the repository content and what you have seen then the file is going to be called as modified file and then when you try to put the file into staging area git will call it as staged files and then when you try to store what will happen you are again trying to put it into repository but as soon as you put into repository once again what will happen the content what you have is same as here then the file will become unmodified so that is how the life cycle of a file is for the very new file which is not at all available in the repository we call it as untracked but if you are going to work when you do a checkout all the files are called as unmodified and then when you do some changes it is going to clearly tell you the file as modified and then when you put into the staging area the file is called as staged then from the staged you are going to do a commit so that is where it will be taking the snapshot details and the user details and it will create a permanent id called commit id okay so this is something that you need to know okay uh, adam in i just one question just one clarification i wanted this point uh, can you please hold on for another 3 4 minutes because uh, i'll just finish the process we'll leave sure. it for discussion okay we can have discussion after that so now if you understand i was just talking about how the repository works and what is the internals of the git but going back to this particular diagram if you understand in git there are two types of repositories one 
is called as local repository and the other one is called as common repository or central repository so why do you need two repositories this is because as a user you need to have the flexibility to modify and store everything what you need so that is where you need a repository in which make this point noted you need a repository in which you are going to modify and you are going to store and you are going to share the commit ids however when you go to the common repository we should not allow anyone to modify here so that is where the central repository or remote repository is meant only for storing and sharing okay so this is how we are going to have two types of repositories so i'll talk about these probably tomorrow but in this try to remember one is local repository and the other one is central repository so this way in all your machine what you are going to have is the local repository so now what are the work that you will do typically make a copy of the central repository which is what we call it as clone so we will see those commands later but now understand in your client machine what and all you need so you need to do a copy of the workspace check out the code modify the code check in the code and then share it to the central repository or to another repository so this is what you want to do so that's where the tool that you are going to use to do that is what we call it as git okay so remember git is just a client side tool which will be available in each and every development or each and every users machine which will help you to create workspace check out the code modify the change check in the code and share the code so that is the only thing that you are going to do however if you look at there is going to be another copy of the workspace which is going to be used by everyone so that is where the first question that comes is where should i keep it so that is where you need to keep it in a common location which can be accessed by everyone and for that your git will not be sufficient so that is where if you are going to do the development work and for which if you need a workspace and a tool then git will be useful but if you have a central repository and if you want to manage that and that is where you need to do lot of activities because as a central repository i told you first it needs to store everything so you need to make sure where you are going to store and how you are going to store who should be accessing it who should not be accessing it, right and further if you want to think of having a backup where are you going to have a backup how many people you are going to allow to work all those things you have to maintain so that is where in git maintaining a central repository is another task that people have to do so that is where as a user you might not be doing it there might be a central repository available so you will just install git in your machine all you need to know is what is the location of this repository from that you will make a copy and you will work but however if you want to maintain the central repository then there are several tools for that but those tools are called as central repository managers what is it central repository managers so that is where if you have a git repository which is a central repository and if you want to maintain then some of the tools which are available are github gitlab bitbucket garret right so there are plenty of them so using that what you are going to do you are going to maintain your central repository so that is where in every organization for doing a continuous development we need two set of tools and there are two set of people who are going to work so remember it doesn't mean that continuous development i'm going to work on git so if you say that are you working as a normal user where you are going to use the client side of the git check out the code modify everything and store that is you are using it for your development or are you supporting the continuous development for a company or a product so what do you mean by supporting so that is where you need to know how to maintain the central repository where to maintain 
how do i do the management of this how do i give the permission who should be working who should not be working how to take a backup all those things will come so that is where depending on the organization you are going to have another tool which is called as central repository manager so this is where in devops as an individual it is not just that okay if i use git i'll become a devops engineer you are just a engineer who are working on it but as a devops person if you are thinking of helping an organization then along with using or implementing a process you can also take care of the responsibility to maintain a central repository it could be for one of the project or it could be only for your team or it could be for every product that is available in a team so that is where from team to team it is going to manage so for this now you need a tool now in that like i said there are many tools now as we are moving ahead into another way where i don't have to install everything on my machine that is where there are some tools available which you are going to get it without installing okay now to talk about it let's just take other example now i want to send a email to some person as a organization you know that you have outlook you can install but without install anything can't i have a yahoo or a gmail what i have to do all i have to do is go to a web page make sure that i have an account and then using that account i send a mail now can i access my gmail from anywhere yes all i need is one laptop so that is where you are not doing any installation everything is available on the cloud correct everything is available online so same way your facebook linkedin everything you don't have to install everything is available online so that way there are some tools where you can install it in a machine and you can create as a central repository or there is already available in online so all you have to do is no installation create account and start working so that way one such tool which is used for managing your central repository and what kind of repository central git repository is what we call it as github and why was this popular because it was free earlier so that is where many open source projects they wanted to share it online and if they wanted to do github was one of the location where no one had to install anything so this is how now for you are practicing or as an organization if you want to set up something and you don't want to install you can quickly go to online that is github.com using that you can directly create a central repository and you can manage okay so that is where most of the people will just say that if you are learning git you need to know github but remember github is not only the tool because it's just one of the simple tool for practicing but as an organization you go like many of the people asked there are a lot of things you have to do in management of the central repository it's not just about giving user access or permissions it is not just about taking backup you should also think about doing a cloning right there are a lot of things you have to do so that is where there are many tools available now couple of the tools which are popular in the market is gitlab that is one of the tool but if you are using something like an atlassian product then you might have also been using some other tools related to it okay so that is where remember github is more of a open source now they have also made it as enterprise but mainly people use github for just storing open source so for your practicing it should be good but as an organization there are many other central repository tools which you have to think about one of them popular is gitlab if not if you go to aws aws also have their own central repository where you are going to maintain but understand what is there git only but to manage you are using a central repository tool so this is where now when you say you are going to work in continuous development you need to understand there are two parts of it have you used the continuous development process and you have written the code or have you helped in continuous development for which you have maintained a central repository so that's where there's a whole bunch of difference between it now being a devops engineer you can do both of them so that is where it's not just about if someone says that hey devops means start with git yes it is a practice because going forward you might be modifying a program or a text file or a scripting or a configuration file but for all of them you are going to use the client side called git on your laptop or your machine but however 
there is another set of work which we have to maintain which is called as central repository okay so this is where we need to understand both of them now as we move forward we will first understand more of the client side on how you can do on your day to day work to modify store and check in with all the concept what we have learned and then we will understand what are the work you are going to do in the central repository and that is where now if you are trying to apply for a job what are the roles and responsibilities that you're going to do so which is what i was telling in the beginning that when we explain we will be explaining everything as a module so module doesn't mean that you are just going to learn some commands so understand there's a whole lot of things you need to understand that is where you will be able to start correlating in your profile in a way that you have used the process you have followed the best practice as well as you have also solved the problems in the maintenance so that you have the ability to drive the projects also so that's where there's a whole lot of things it's not just about commands it's not just about tools there's a whole lot of things that you need to know including maintenance monitoring right i'll talk about all of them as we move forward in each two so that's a whole logic okay so by this i'll stop it today and if there is any questions please stay back if you want we will discuss for some time if not we have all the groups okay we can just go ahead and take and by saying it i'll stop and we'll take the class again at 7:30 tomorrow thank you